In the dead of night, an ominous shadow lurked in the dark corners of California during the mid-1980s. This was Richard Ramirez, better known as the Night Stalker. Born in El Paso, Texas in 1960, Ramirez would grow to become one of America's most notorious serial killers. His name, the Night Stalker, was not self-appointed, but rather a chilling moniker given by the media, a testament to his preference for striking under the cover of darkness. This faceless terror, this phantom in the night, targeted unsuspecting individuals in their own homes, bypassing locked doors and windows as if they were mere suggestions. His crimes were not limited to burglary, but escalated to sexual assault and murder, each act more brutal than the last. His reign of terror, spanning over a year, would forever scar the residents of California. Origins often shape destinies. Richard Ramirez was no exception. Born on the leap day of 1960 in El Paso, Texas, Ramirez's early life was marred by a toxic mix of abuse and violence. His childhood home was far from a sanctuary, often echoing with the sounds of familial discord. This volatile environment, coupled with his exposure to deviant behavior, laid the groundwork for the monster he would become. At a tender age, Ramirez was subjected to the gruesome war stories of his cousin, a Vietnam veteran. These tales, filled with graphic accounts of violence and torture, served as a twisted form of bedtime stories for young Richard. The seeds of depravity were being planted, watered by the violent influences that surrounded him. His adolescence was a grim foreshadowing of the terror he would later unleash. The seeds of his future atrocities were sown in this disturbed upbringing. Ramirez's early life was a chilling prologue to a story of unimaginable horror. In 1984, the nightmare began. Richard Ramirez, already steeped in a life of violence and deviant behavior, embarked on a horrific crime spree in Los Angeles, California. His victims were chosen seemingly at random, from elderly women home alone to young couples sleeping peacefully in their beds. Ramirez's modus operandi was as chilling as it was unpredictable. He would break into homes under the cover of darkness, his intentions far more sinister than a simple burglary. His crimes escalated from theft to sexual assault, then to murder, each act more brutal than the last. As the victims began to pile up, a pattern emerged. The Night Stalker preferred to strike at night, entering through unlocked doors or windows. His victims were often tied up, assaulted, and then killed. His signature was the violence, the brutality, the sheer terror he inflicted on his victims. The media soon caught wind of the terrifying string of crimes. They dubbed the mysterious perpetrator the Night Stalker, a name that struck fear into the hearts of Californians. The fear was palpable. People began to lock their doors, buy guns for protection, and sleep with one eye open. The Night Stalker had achieved what he wanted. He had become a figure of terror. But who was he targeting? The victims seemed to have nothing in common. They were of different ages, genders, and ethnicities. There was no clear pattern, no discernible motive. This randomness only added to the fear. It seemed that anyone could be next. His reign of terror lasted for over a year, leaving a trail of death and destruction in its wake. As the body count rose, so did the panic. The Night Stalker seemed unstoppable, an invisible predator lurking in the shadows. His spree, random and brutal, shook the very foundations of safety and security in one's own home. The Night Stalker's reign of terror had begun, and it would be a long, horrifying year before it ended. In August 1985, the reign of the Night Stalker came to an abrupt end. Richard Ramirez was captured, not by law enforcement, but by a group of quick-thinking civilians in East Los Angeles. They recognized him from his widely circulated mugshot and fearlessly detained him until the police arrived. His capture marked the beginning of a new chapter in this grim saga, the trial. The Night Stalker's trial was a spectacle that riveted the nation. The media swarmed the courtroom, broadcasting every detail to a public both horrified and fascinated by the unfolding drama. Ramirez, for his part, seemed to relish the attention, often appearing in court with a smug grin on his face, further fueling the media and public's fascination. The charges against Ramirez were extensive, 13 counts of murder, alongside numerous charges for rape, burglary, and attempted murder. The evidence was overwhelming, and in 1989, the jury delivered a unanimous verdict. Richard Ramirez was convicted on all counts and sentenced to death. However, the execution chamber would never claim the Night Stalker. Instead, it was a battle with B-cell lymphoma that ended Ramirez's life. On June 7, 2013, he died in the hospital ward of San Quentin State Prison, still waiting on death row. His death brought an end to the saga of the Night Stalker, but it did little to erase the fear and trauma he had inflicted on so many. 
In the annals of American crime history, the name Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, stands as a chilling testament to the dark depths of human depravity. His reign of terror may have ended, but the memory of his crimes remains, a stark reminder of the monstrous capacity lurking within the human soul. The death of Richard Ramirez did not erase the terror he had instilled. His heinous acts, a chilling testament to human depravity, left an indelible mark on his victims and the wider community. The fear he bred extended beyond his capture, trial, and eventual death, echoing through the corridors of time. His victims, their families, and millions of Californians carry the scars of his reign, a grim legacy etched in their collective memory. The memory of the Night Stalker continues to cast a long, dark shadow, a ghost from the past that lingers in the minds of those who remember his reign of terror.